In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a variable and an expression to dynamically modify the Excel file name at runtime. And this is the Excel file name for the destination. So I've already set up a variable to use for this. It's called Excel underscore file name. And uh, I've used a data type of string. And I put a value in there, a name of a file that actually exists, but this is not where I want to write the data to. I have the name of the Excel file in uh, a SQL Server table. So I'm going to get that first before I execute the data flow. So uh, here's the execute SQL task. I'm going to go in and set that up to read the uh, file name from the SQL Server table into the variable. My result set is going to be a single row. Uh, connection type is OLEDB. The connection is the same one that I am going to be reading the data from to write into Excel. That's already been configured here. You can see that. And uh, I'm going to be using direct input. My SQL statement I already have defined here. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so there you can see I'm just pulling the file name from a table called names. And then I need to go to result set. And here I need to add a row. And the result set name, this is where the name of the column from the SQL Server table goes. And that is Excel file name. It has already filled in my variable because I only have one. If you have multiple variables, you'll have to choose the correct one there. So the select statement will read the value from the column named Excel file name into the variable named Excel underscore file name. Now we'll just connect the green arrow to the data flow task. And now we'll go over to the data flow canvas. I have the OLEDB set up as a source and uh, I'm using Cozyrex Excel Destination Plus for the destination. Now I need to go look at the properties for the Excel Connection Manager. So I right mouse click on the Excel Plus Connection Manager and I go to Properties. And here you can see there is a property named Excel File Path. And when I set up the Connection Manager, I pointed it at the empty.xlsx file. And you do not use the connection string property for an Excel file, even though you can see the complete file path there. I like to set retain same connection to false, because most of the time you're going to be putting this sort of thing in a loop, and you don't want to keep processing the same Excel file, right? We want to probably write to a different Excel file. Okay, now we'll go to the expressions parameter so we can set up an expression that will incorporate the value in our variable into the Excel file path parameter. Okay, so the property we're working with, as I just said, is Excel file path. And then we need to put in our expression. And I just happen to have that already set up. This is the full file path on my computer. And I'll paste that in there. And then I'm adding the file name at the end, which is the one that's in this variable. So here we have that variable. And we evaluate the expression. And there you can see it puts empty.xlsx there because we have not read in the name from the uh, SQL Server table yet. Now the package is all set up and ready to execute. However, I want to set up a breakpoint so that I can show you that the variable name gets loaded into the variable before we execute our data flow. This is very useful if you have the data flow in a loop and want to ensure that your variable is doing what you want it to do. I'll set that up and be right back. Okay, now my breakpoint is set up, so I'll execute the package. And it's hit that breakpoint. Now its value is copied tax sale list, which is the name of the actual file that I want to copy the data into. So we'll just finish execution. And that's how it works. Thanks for watching.